Hey guys, so I am just going to try to compile a video together of things I'm trying to do in the kitchen because I'm <laughs> clearly not doing a great job of videoing myself and keeping on schedule. So just hang in there with me if you're interested. I am trying to create some, um, not really how to's, but just things I'm doing on the way. So right now, what I am thinking through in my head is working on the uppers and what I'm going to do about this. I think I said in a previous video short, whatever, these are going to stay open because it's too close to the wall. The door I had there, I just didn't love it. it felt crowded. Um, even though it looked nice, it just felt crowded. So I'm going to leave that open on each end there. And then when I do these doors, I've thought through that I think I'm going to make them uh, inserted so that you can see through the majority of the cabinet and that just brings up to what do I put glass acrylic uh, clear fluted glazed or the whole gambit so I went through and I looked and of course glass is a little costly um, acrylics a little less I've looked at different kinds and what I actually settled on was not the expected thing very lightweight and it is actually used most of the time for greenhouses. So let me show you what this is. Okay, so it is like a PVC panel and it is a quarter inch thick. But if you see here, can you see my hand? It's got a, a fluted or reeded effect, which is really what I wanted my glass, but that's kind of an expensive glass. And as you can see here, there's not a lot of obscurity, but it just gives it some interest. And again, it's a about a quarter inch thick piece. It's super lightweight. The four by eight sheet cost me like $95 at Home Depot. So it was cost effective. I'm gonna give it a try and you know see what happens using this as my glass insert. So then that makes it, how big do I make this framing? Because these are small doors. They're only 10 inches wide. And so how big is the glass insert gonna be? It's not gonna be very big. And things I have to consider is the concealed hinges come out not quite full two inches. So here's my thought, a two inch all the way around. But then I was like, that might look kind of bulky over here. So because these meet in the middle, two inches, two inches, one inch, one inch. So when these are closed, that will be a two inch piece of cabinetry. So I think it will look more balanced and it's kind of hard to see on the camera. Let me see if I can. Nope. So you guys can kind of see, I've marked it in the red. And if you kind of come back just a hair, do you see when you look at it, and yes, the cabinets are definitely not correct right now, don't worry, rough draft. You can kind of see how that two inch in the middle illusion will make that more balanced. So I'll do that for the uppers, and I think what that will give me is something that's see-through, see-through, open, same thing on the, the side behind me, and then that will make this feel more open, bright, and airy as well. So what I'm trying to figure out right now is how I'm going to do it. Basically what you see, these little drawings is my two inches, my two inches. And then what I think I'm going to need to do is leave like a quarter inch to be able to, I don't know if you call that route that out or use a table saw to create a, a space for it. And a lip for the for the uh, insert to set against and the thought I'm currently having is to do it near the front or the back but what I think I'll do is these are probably not even quite three quarters might be a hair under three quarters uh, it's really close hard to tell sorry about the so yeah it's about three quarters so we're talking that the the insert will be kind of between this light band and this other light band right there in the middle. I think that's how it'll work. So I need to be able to maybe have a piece of trim on the front, like a tiny little trim that will kind of cover the lip. And it'll make this look more decorative with having just a little baby trim 
there. So right now I'm just doing my computing, figuring out how I'm going to make this. This will be my first attempt at this type of door. <laughs> so yeah, just um, pray for me and expect there's going to be mistakes along the way because it wouldn't be any way else, would it, if it wasn't a mistake. But <sighs> we're going to get there, guys. And I'm gluing up the hood better since it was kind of looking a little crazy. Um, I've got magnets to to uh, install so that it'll suck against that. It'll be all right. I'm thinking I will paint the hood, still considering if I'm going to stain this or not. Because these are going to be uh, painted. So this might be painted to match. What do you guys think? Should I paint the hood? the same color, which is like a chocolate brown, or maybe it should go lighter because my tiles are going to be kind of a biscuit off-white ivory color. And I'm still considering if I'm going to tile the entire wall or not. If I don't tile the entire wall, then it'll stop about here and this up will be painted probably white just or some version of white to keep it balanced um, or I might just tile that whole wall Whew. yep and so it's kind of daunting it's gonna probably go fast and we'll find out if I make mistakes but yeah all right so I have ran my original door through the table saw and I cut the outside to two and a quarter, bottom and top two and a quarter, <coughs> and the middle to one and a quarter, so that way I could route out or, or use the table saw to create these little insets that are half an inch deep on each piece, so that I have somewhere for that piece to sit, and then of course uh, work to connect them uh, together, but I wanted to first see where it was. So this is the front of the cabinet. The piece would lay into here and then I would put a piece of trim on the top. So right now I'm just having to figure out how I'm going to connect the styles and rails together. But uh, can you guys let me put that kind of back together there. See the vision? Doesn't look too bad I think. And now when you stand away from it, the middle, because those are an inch a piece, together looks like two inches. So that's way more balanced. I think that's gonna look really good. All right, guys. So I attempted to create doors yesterday and they came out all right. I wanna say I rabbited out, uh, I'll show you in a second. And I didn't like the way they were coming together. Uh, they just looked messy. I tried to connect them with dowels and it just didn't work. So today I redid the doors and this time I used tenon and mortise and it did way better. And as you can see, I have them glued and strapped up right now. My floor is my workshop because <laughs> I live in a home where I don't have a primary dedicated spot. So I make do with what I have. And so they're glued up and it looks really good so far for what they are. Again, this is the extreme affordable version. So, you know, instead of the proper, uh, what is it, uh, hardwood or pine board where it's much more straight, this is the plywood. So you're gonna have a lot more variation, problems with texture, a little bit of warpings, things I've gotta keep in mind when I'm doing this. And instead of glass or acrylic, this is a plexiglass, um, what you use for greenhouses. But as you can kind of see here, it gives this reeded effect, which I really like when I held it up to the cabinet. So I'm really excited about the way that looks. But let me show you yesterday's design. Uh, here's a piece right here. So you can see here in the light, my point was I rabbited out that part right there. I was gonna have the plexiglass lay down and I was gonna then put trim over top to keep it. But the problem was, 
a butt joints and how to successfully butt a joint like this, I tried to dowel it and again, I did dowels. I've done them before, but I don't have a proper jig, so it's very hard. And plus with plywood, you have to worry about the grain and the splitting. So it just was way more work than necessary. So now with those mortise and tendon joints, I'm gonna be able to um, have a better joint and then I'll just obviously take my brackets off and install them on the new set. So those are scrap slash things I can use. And now I've got two doors and I knew I was gonna have to worry or concern myself with, this is my first time doing this, so waste, but I thankfully can get basically four of these doors out of that amount of material from these two doors because I'm taking out the entire middle. Uh, so the mess ups over there and these actually came from the same door material. So I haven't lost any traction here. I've made these two. These two will technically make four doors. These will make four doors. These will make four doors. So I'll have more than enough to continue to make mistakes, <laughs> which I'm sure will happen. But. I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to put them somewhere safe and hopefully they will look good when mounted. I mean, they will look good if I do a good job mounting them, of course. Showing you guys, I'm trying to keep up with progress. So I have shown uh, me cutting the styles and rails. Um, I don't think I have any footage of cutting a bunch of the stuff. It's just a repeat process. I'm an amateur, so footage of me is really just self-validation. Um, Y'all will learn from some other channel that is actually a good work woodworker. I am totally amateur and I am using low quality um, ply, which is going to show itself at some point, but I have showed you guys basically getting them started, showing you putting together, and then now these are mounted generally terribly like everything else is because they were already cut, the styles were cut, and they already had the hardware, so I popped them on, but these were actually from this part of the cabinet, and I'm already seeing how I think the cabinet itself is not sitting plumber level. Something isn't quite right. Cause I think the doors are probably closer to square than the cabinet, which I was hoping the cabinet was gonna be pretty square, but um, I'll get you guys closer and show you what I mean. So I'm trying to figure out how to fix this because ultimately I don't mind having to reset new hinges, um, like basically take out the plates that are currently installed um, dowel, wood, glue, reset them, and then have to re-drill a new hole if I have to. It's going to be a pain, but it is what it is. But you'll see these were fit in and we're just, we're not quite there, but it looks cool. You got to say from that far away, that looks pretty cool. I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> Please don't blast me, woodworkers. I'm trying. I'm learning. This is the process of uber affordability how do we make this look high end on a low end dollar so let me show you the mistakes 
All right, guys, let me see if I can get a little bit closer here. So that's pretty self-evident. And when I put the level up against this, let's see if I can show you. Now these are mounted and, and they're a uh, zero clearance or I forget what they're called, but they're overlap, full overlap, frameless. So you can see right against here, this bubble is not, is not level. So I have a feeling if I were to pull it off to make it level, that's probably about where this is off. So everything's kind of tilt it off a little bit. So if I can move the top corner this way, this would then bend correctly. I think that would fix the problem, but I'm not really sure if it's a cabinet issue or a door issue. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So I built the cabinet and I worked really hard on trying to square up all the pieces I had square uh, corner frames, I had a corner speed square, you know, but things just aren't going to be perfect when you have to set them up. And it's got to be what it is. It has to be. And of course, now that I think it's leaning like this, I can't unsee it. And it, I feel like now I'm, that's all I'm going to be able to see. So I've got to figure out, is there enough play in the cabinet itself? to tilt over. Now you'll be able to tell, see if I can zoom in on this, that, oops, sorry guys, that cabinet touches at the top, but not at the bottom. So you would think it's already tilted this way, but the way it's leaning or supposedly the way this is leaning says a different story. So I think what I'll do, I'll move the fridge and I'll put a bigger level on the side here to see if it really is one way or the other so I can see if there's any correction I can make. Um, ultimately then, the next thing I would have to do to facade it, if that's going to be the word I'm using, is take the doors down, take the plates off the cabinet. Like I said, put the dowels in, glue it, let it dry so that I have a fresh working surface and then rehang them one at a time and hopefully fix the problem in hanging. But if my doors are square and my cabinet is not, I don't think that would even help. So I've got to figure out if the cabinet is going to be not my best friend here, but Hey, even looking in the, vine, the view screen, that's a cool looking door, guys. It's a cool looking door, you've got to admit, right? So I'm excited about it because I almost messed up because this is a skinnier cabinet than this one. And I made these doors and then realized I was making them for here, but I made them on this size. So thankfully I have plenty of extra wood I can use. Matter of fact, I've cut all the pieces I need and I've taken one door down. So that's all extra wood if I need to make more <laughs> doors. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here, guys. I was hoping frameless would hide some, um, some, some, uh, mistakes, but I feel like it is just as glaringly obvious to me no matter what. So anyway, I'm working on it. That's a cool looking door. Way cooler than a solid piece. Awesome. Well, you guys have a good one until next time.